السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا ومولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Alhamdulillah, all praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing us to be Muslims. All praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing us to be in this masjid. All praise and thanks is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing us to be part of those who are successful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all our efforts and our deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala place us in the highest levels of Jannah. The effort in regards to becoming successful by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is according to a system which is not a common system or even the norm in our daily life. Becoming successful by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not measurable by any men. Regardless, either the person is considered to be a pious man or he is considered to be a low life, or he is considered to be a dignitary, or he is considered to be a nobody. That success by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is completely different to the success that we would find in our life that we live here on earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَّاهَا فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا Allah SWT takes the oath by mankind. As we know that Allah SWT does not take oaths at all likely. So when he takes the oath by mankind, mankind is something which is considered as something which is very great. It is the, one of the greatest creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the greatest creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that by the mankind and how I have proportioned him in every manner, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that that he has placed within mankind a goodness and a badness. And we know this as a fitrah, a natural instinct to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a natural instinct to do good. That's our fitrah. It is naturally, it's called the natural disposition. It's already placed in there by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed us with our own challenges, with that which is bad, which we know as nafs then which encourages us to do the wrong thing, which leads us down the wrong, down the wrong path. So when Allah SWT says that by mankind and how I have proportioned him and I have placed the goodness and the badness inside of him, Allah SWT says that verily the one who is successful is he who purifies himself. He who purifies himself. And that who is unsuccessful is he who corrupts himself. But is it possible to purify ourselves, to completely remove our nafs? Have we heard of a person saying that I've attained the level which I no longer have nafs? I've attained such a level that shaitan does not affect me anymore. No, because Allah SWT says that as He created mankind, that the nafs is there. And this journey is a continuous journey to purify ourselves. To continuously do and act on the right things. So, when we speak about the success of this dunya, as a student, as a student, your goal is school. Your objective is to achieve the high level in school. So, if you achieve the, all the A's, 
then you're a successful student, no doubt about it. If you success, if you achieve riches in your business and your business grows, then you have a successful business. There's no doubt about that. But what is the success by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is the success by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa relates a, 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 a particular story to, to the companions. And it's a very famous story which has been related amongst us. And it's about the man who killed the hundred people. That there was a man who lived in corruption and he wanted to purify himself. He realized that this path which I'm leading, the life that I'm living, is not the life which brings me contentment. So he goes to, to a pious person and he says that whoever the person is says, Oh, uh, monk, I have killed so many people, yet I still want to achieve success by God. What is my salvation? And the monk turns to him and says, How can you? How can you accept? Uh, how can you expect success when you have caused so much corruption in this world? How can you expect to be forgiven? When there are all these lives that you have murdered and Allah, God is supposed to just turn, turn, turn the forgiveness over to you, you will never be forgiven. So then he decides that if I'm not going to be forgiven, then I'll kill him as well. So he completes the hundred. Then he goes to another person, an alim. And the alim says that it's your environment which is bad. Make hijrah. Make hijrah, move for the sake of Allah, for the sake of salvation, for the sake of the reward, the tawab, for the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Move from that land which is corrupted to another land which is pure. And on his journey, he passes away. And the, the, the narration continues that two angels came down. One wanted to take him to Jahannam for his action and the other one wanted to take him to Jannah for his intention. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so they, they decided that we'll measure the land. Which one is he closer to? If he's closer to the land of the corruption, then he'll go to Jahannam. And closer to the land of piety, then he'll go to Jannah. And the fact is that he was closer to the land of the corruption. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, that no, that is not the measurement of success by me. That is not the measurement of piety. That how much you are able to do in this dunya is going to be reflected on what akhirah you will get. Rather, what is your intention and how sincere you are is how you will be judged on the day of Qiyamah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extended that land, made the land, made the land bigger and extended it so that he was closer to the land of piety and he entered Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Qad aflaha al-mu'minun Al-ladheena hum fi salatihim khashi'oon Wal-ladheena hum anil lahwi mu'ridoon والذين هم للزكاة فاعلون والذين هم لفروجهم حافظون Oh, how successful is the believer? قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Definitely that those who believe are successful. And we want to be part of these people who Allah SWT has promised success. Part of those who believe. So how do we become part of them? Allah SWT explains further. Who are these people? They are those who in their salah, they attain khushu. They attain a greatness of concentration and awareness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And Allah SWT continues to describe all these different characteristics of the believer. But take note that the quality that is needed is not an exterior quality. It is an internal quality 
How can you show someone that you are you, you possess khushu in your salah? The way that you hold your hands so tight to your body, the way that you close your eyes when you pray. So the closer that you hold means you have more khushu? No. That khushu is only known by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So at no point is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that the believer, the successful one, who has done physically, physically done so much in this world. That he abstains from idle talk. Meaning what? He is consciously in his mind aware of what his tongue is going to say. And he refrains from speaking without a purpose. The Prophet ﷺ in everything that he did was purposeful. Whether from his walk, the companions used to mention that when the Prophet ﷺ used to walk, we couldn't keep up with him. When you see someone who has a purpose in life, when they, when they, when they have to get somewhere, they will walk very fast, they will walk with a purpose. And the companions couldn't keep up with the Prophet ﷺ that he had so much purpose in even his walk, and even his jokes, there was a purpose to it. Sometimes we sit and just talk and joke and think about what to say and what would sound cool or what would, what would impress the next person. But the Prophet ﷺ, in his jokes, there was a purpose. When he joked, he wanted to cheer the next person up. When he sat with his wives at night, as the wives used to speak, and we know that that is the nature of women, that is the fitrah of women that they would like to relate. The Prophet ﷺ, would sit and listen as they would speak, as she would speak and he would entertain to fulfill that, that, that purpose that nature that women have to speak so everything that the Prophet ﷺ did was purposeful and so in our speech don't find us just idle speaking if we want to greet have the intention, make it an ibadah, make that greeting an ibadah, that when I give salam, I intend to get reward out of this. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Oh, may the, may the peace and blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon you. That I am making dua for you, in turn Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would accept my dua. Whatever that we do, let it be purpose in it. Whatever, whatever that we do, let it be purpose in it. Don't find ourselves idling. And what would be understood from this is that anything which is lower, unnecessary talk or, or, or a, a, a vulgar speech. If idle talking is something that doesn't attain a taqwa, what about vulgar speech? So we won't even go into that. We'll be always conscious to be a believer who attains success. It starts in here. It starts in here. Allah SWT continues to say, Nobody knows if we have paid our zakat or not. Nobody knows. There is no zakat agency that goes around. You can say that I've paid zakat to this particular fa poor family or that particular poor family or particular agency or wherever I pay zakat and there is no one to police it except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows and if you give money and say this so much money is my zakat and allow people to see it then that is immeasurable in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is not attaining taqwa that is not attaining God fearing and finally Allah SWT says, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ And in this world that we're living in today, this world has evolved so quick that we, we aren't even able to keep up with what, what our children are into, with what our children are watching. This, this world of us has evolved so fast that just by driving down the street, you are exposed to so many fitna. You are completely exposed to it, just waiting in the car. You would see people walking by. 
in immodest clothing and you are just exposed by going from one place to another. Allah SWT says in regards to the private parts, they are protecting over it. They are aware of it. So it is not only restricted to what physical action we do. It is not only restricted to that, but it is also inclusive of what we look at. Where we go. You know, sometimes we can't, we can't help but stop at the traffic light. And a lady passes and she dresses immodestly. We can look away. Or perhaps we would purposefully go into a, into a particular shop and know that there's certain things which is very apparent and very forward in our face. And we say, oh, I can't help it. I just have to go and buy so and so. I can't help but to have to be in this environment. As long as we are Allah conscious. Some of us don't have the choice. Some of us have to enter into these particular situations. But always have Allah conscious. Always be aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrates that أَلَا إِنَّ فِي الْجَسَدِ مُضْغَةِ إِذَا صَلَحَتْ صَلَحَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّ وَإِذَا فَسَدَ الْفَسَدَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّ أَلَا وَهُوَ الْقَلْبِ In us is a piece of flesh and that piece of flesh is the heart. If the heart is corrupted, then the whole body, the entire body is corrupted. And if the heart is, is made firm or rectified, then the whole body will be in a form of rectification. So all of it starts within the heart. It all starts with our heart. That's where we are going to gain khushu in our salah. That's where when we give in sadaqah, we give with the faith and belief that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching. And this money that I give is not going to make me any lesser. It's not going to make me any poorer. Rather, it's going to increase me. When we have the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will believe that that money that I have given will benefit me down the track. If not in this dunya, then greatly multiply it in the akhirah. And a lot of times we would rather to have the benefits come to us in the akhirah. So the question to us today is, how long are we going to continue to lie to ourselves and follow our nafs? We know that the success in this dunya doesn't reflect to the success in the akhirah. How long are we going to lie that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can't see me, doesn't know what I'm doing, doesn't know what I'm thinking, the thoughts that enter into our head, the thoughts that we create, the direction that we move to, the people who we associate with, the actions that we do. How long are we going to lie and say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not watching, He doesn't know? Or we lie to ourselves and say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His Na'udhu ability is limited upon me. My success lies that I have to sustain my family. I have to make my business work. I have to make the money. When are we going to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and realize that the true success is in that strive? It is not in the result. This dunya is result orientated. A student is only successful if he tops his class. A business is only successful if he gets a deal. A business is only successful if, if, they, if it's able to branch out. So if your business doesn't branch out, then you're not successful. But by, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that strive towards Him is a success. Like the strive of the lady who lived a life of sin. And for that one pure intention, she went down the well to quench the thirst of the dog. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave her success. Now we are entering into a particular time which the Prophet sallallahu used to make a lot of dua. He used to say, Allahumma barik lana fi rajab wa sha'ban wa ballighna ramadan. No, we are not yet in a rajab. We are coming very close to it. So to attain this taqwa, we have to be prepared for ramadan. And in preparation of reaping the bounty of ramadan, we have to be prepared for rajab and sha'ban. Why? Because the narration says that the Prophet ﷺ never fasted more in his life except for these two months. 
and also of course Ramadan where the whole month is compulsory. But these two months were the two months that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to fast the most. How are we going to follow in the footsteps of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Ask ourselves. Ask ourselves, when was the last time I, I made nafal, nafal, nafal uh, fasting? Sunnah fasting. When was the last time? Was it last Ramadan? Was it that long ago? Because we know time just catches up like that. And before we know it, Ramadan is by the door. Tomorrow is Ramadan. And realize, whoa, I have to fast. Why would we want to enter into Ramadan like that? Wouldn't we want to enter into Ramadan already gaining taqwa for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, already on the right path? Wouldn't we want to change the course or direction of our life, get up to the right course so when Ramadan comes in, we can be in the fast lane? And not try to get into the fast lane whilst in Ramadan. So inshallah from today we start making this dua. Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Sha'ban wa balighna Ramadan. Jazakumullah khair wa akhir da'wana. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin.